Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Wednesday. Today I have a very different video for you. Time to add a little variety to the channel. Uh, but I have my luxury wish list that I wanted to share, especially because last week we talked about Van Island. A few days ago on Instagram I posted a picture of my top six items and a few of you had uh, wanted to know what other items I have on there as well as on Minx Monday. So thank you guys so much for the request. So I thought it would be really fun to, uh, to film this. But I've always been apprehensive to film this particular video because obviously I don't have the item to share with you guys. It's not physically in front of me because it's on the wish list. Uh, so when it comes to incorporating pictures onto my videos, I want to make sure that I have permission from either an individual to use uh, their uh, to use their image or from a company. So I'm very happy to say that I have just about all of the images. So we have some eye candy and I'm not sitting here for 20 minutes rambling and you have nothing to reference it to. <laughs> uh, so uh, obviously I'm not going to come on here and show you guys my entire wish list because let's be honest, we will be here forever in, in a day and ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm going to share with you my top 10 items and I will prioritize them by the one that I want to get the most and then so on and so forth. Uh, so I think what I'll end up doing is I'll put a picture of the item and um, Obviously, I put a description of it, like what it is, and then I will tell you guys why it's on the list. So let's get started. Number one, the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30, the classic Speedy in the Damia Ben canvas. I absolutely love this bag. I had the 35. I sold it about a year and a half ago, almost two years now. Uh, even though I did love the bag, I felt that it was just a tad too big, uh, and I ended up preferring the size 30 anyways. Uh, but this bag has been on my wish list literally forever, uh, ever since I sold the 35, and every time I end up going into the boutique, um, <laughs> I end up getting distracted by something else. So like I said before, it's been on there forever. Uh, uh, but when we ended up booking our trip to London, I figured I would have a better chance of finding one made in France. And a lot of you know, I am an MIF snob, definitely 100%. I know, okay, I know I'm crazy because they're all the same materials, they're all this, but for me and my craziness, I like to see that tab that says made in France when it comes to speedies. I just, I just do. And I have bags that are made in the US, made in Italy, uh, made in Spain, so it's not like I'm against it. But when it comes to speedies, I like, <laughs> I like to see that tab. Like I said, I'm, I'm crazy, but <laughs> to each their own. Uh, plus, when we end up going to London, I know that I can also save some money on it versus buying it here in the States because uh, obviously here in California, I'd end up having to pay tax on top of what the price is. So if I can save money, if I can get it made in France when I'm over there, why not? Uh, and just like I said, Damien Ben is my all-time favorite print. Super, super carefree. And of course, it has that beautiful red interior. And I just lo absolutely love Classic Speedies, uh, even though, uh, we will be talking about another one on my wish list very soon. Uh, I tend to prefer the classic speedies. Uh, I don't, I honestly, I don't know why. I just think that they're so, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because they're iconic. Uh, but uh, yeah, so top priority number one, the Louis Vuitton <laughs> classic speedy 30 in the Damier Ben canvas. Yes. <laughs> this item has quickly crept from like number 10 <laughs> to number two. The Louis Vuitton Nice BB. Uh, this was actually released, I think it was last October or maybe last August, I can't remember. Uh, and I looked at it at the boutique then and I fell in love with it, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, I kind of put it on the wish list, but didn't really you know, give it too, too much thought afterwards. And then, and then <laughs> I see people like uh, Jerusha and Amanda and Laura and Purse Diva end up unboxing it on their channels. And now it's like slowly creeping up more and more. And then I see it more and more on Instagram. And I love this item. <laughs> and I actually talked about it on uh, Minx Monday, uh, a few, oh, obviously on Monday. And uh, I said that it is on the wish list. I didn't know if I wanted to get it, you know, anytime soon because I would use it, personally, I would end up using it as a luggage piece as it is. I know some people rock it as a handbag and that's awesome. But for me personally, I would end up using it uh, for luggage. Uh, and <laughs> since that video, it started to creep up even more. <laughs> so it is now number two. Uh, I think it has a pretty good price point uh, for what it is, especially because it's very, it's obviously it's, it's a, it's a, uh, lower end train case, if you will. I love train cases. I think they are beautiful, uh, but they are very expensive. <laughs> so this is something more that I could afford. Uh, but I love this little, I love this little case. And, um, 
like I said, I would end up using it only when I travel. Uh, who knows? I say that now. I might end up changing my mind. Uh, but I just think it's so cute. And I love the fact that it has that washable interior so you don't have to worry about, you know, staining it or anything like that. And it just has a really simple design. And uh, believe it or not, it is very, very lightweight as well. Uh, especially because, again, the other train cases tend to be a little bit heavier because they have a lot more hardware. Uh, but this obviously is the canvas. And it's, um, even though the other one is as well, but this one just doesn't have all that extra hardware. And all that extra leather but the niece bb <laughs> in monograph so i blame i blame all of you guys because it was doing really well on you know in number 10 spot number 10 or spot number 15 way back when and now it's number two <laughs> uh so i absolutely love this item and again i think it has a great great price point Don't worry, it shocked me too, all right? I know what you're thinking. Really, Minnie? Really? A bandolier? <laughs> yes. The Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 bandolier in the monogram canvas. All right, all right. So I, I gotta be honest with you guys. For as long as I have been on YouTube, for as long as I can remember, I have always said, I even said it earlier in the video, I prefer classic Speedies. I like the way that they look. Uh, they're very iconic. And I, I mean, I prefer hand carry bags, always. That and totes. So... <sighs> It wasn't until the Pouchette Matisse, and I blame it on the Pouchette Matisse because that bag, a lot of us here in the community or anyone that has this bag ends up uh, using it cross-body. So I now realize how amazing and how fantastic it is to go hands-free <laughs> when you have a crossbody bag. I, I love it. I love it. Will I sit here and will I end up getting all crossbody bags moving forward? Probably not because I still prefer the hand carry and the totes, uh, but I can definitely 100% give credit to going to using a crossbody bag. So because of the Pouchette Matisse, I ended up kind of, you know, browsing around with the bandolier uh, it made it onto the wish list last year, and I can tell you guys, every time I've gone into the boutique, literally every time, I end up trying it out. Uh, and it's it remains on the wish list, and now it is number three. And for those of you that are wondering, why am I going for a 25 versus a 30? Since I just talked about liking a 30 so much, I prefer the 30 for the classic style, for the classic size. Kind of like what I said about the 35, I felt it was too big, so I prefer the 30 for a hand carry. Uh, so when it comes to the bandolier, because it is going to be crossbody, I don't want it to be too big. I don't want it to be too overwhelming. So I feel that the 25 is the perfect size for my body frame. Uh, so this isn't a knock against anyone that has the 30 by any means whatsoever, but this is just personally what I end up liking. Uh, so I made it onto the list. And the main reason why I also went for monogram instead of getting uh, the um, the Dami Ben, since I also talked about the Dami Ben being my all-time favorite print, is because since I would end up using it crossbody, and since the Dami Ben does have the treated leather, I feel that it'll end up being maybe a little bit a little bit harsher on my chest area because I end up having a lot I have a larger chest uh, so when I do put it on crossbody I don't want it digging into my chest uh, and I feel that with the the vaquetta on the monogram piece I feel that it'll be a lot softer and I don't have to worry about it as much uh, so every time I've gone into the boutique I have tried them I've had I have tried on the Dami Ben but I didn't find it as comfortable as the monogram uh, so I know, I know, I know. Minnie, I can't believe a bandolier. I, uh, trust me, I know, I know. But I love the bag. <laughs> I love it. I love the size. I, I just, I went crazy for it. <laughs> and trust me, when it went on the wish list, it was like number 20, then it went to 15 to like eight to now where it's at. I think, well, I don't know. They're all going <laughs> from like eight and 10 to, to where they are, but... Yeah, the Speedy 25 Bandolier in the Monogram Canvas. <laughs> Number four is the Louis Vuitton Keep All 55 Bandolier in the Monogram Eclipse uh, canvas. Uh, and it's safe to say that I have a crazy obsession with Keep Alls. I do have three in my collection. I have 155 and 245s. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I end up going back and forth with this print with, between the 45 and the 55. I really wish that they ended up making it in the 50 uh, because I think it's a, it's a happy medium. Uh, but the 55, the reason why it's on there is because I feel that I can obviously carry a lot more, especially when we whenever we travel um but 
at the same time, the more you end up fitting in there, they can get a little cumbersome. They can end up being a little bit heavier. So that's why I go back and forth with the 45 and the 55. Uh, but I love this print. I love the combination that it has with the black and the, then you have that beautiful gray and then it also comes with the silver hardware versus the gold hardware or the brass uh, hardware that most Louis Vuitton pieces have. And uh, I've also been a big fan of the Damien Graffiti, but when I saw the Monogram Eclipse launch, I just fell in love with it. I have a Pochette Voyage and I don't know. It's just a really fun twist on the classic, um, you know, monogram print. So uh, I, I love this. And it's very, very carefree. I don't have to worry about any kind of, uh, you know, water stains or any type of patina or what have you. Uh, so I just, I love this bag. And um, it's been on, it's been on the wish list pretty much since it launched. Uh, so will I end up getting it? Who knows? Uh, but I still, I mean, I can appreciate the beauty of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the Louis Vuitton Keep All 55 Bandolier in the Monogram Eclipse print. Now, number five might end up shocking you guys, but that is the Valentino Lock Shoulder Bag. Uh, the one in the picture, I believe, is the Mini. And thank you so, so much to my very good friend, Nettie, for allowing me to use your picture. Uh, but the one that I would prefer is the Medium, just because it's a tad bit bigger. But I, I would absolutely love to get it in that beautiful red, because you guys know my love for red. But uh, the reason why I wanted to go for this, um, this lock bag is because I really like how simple it is. And I'm a very, very big fan of Valentino. I, even though I don't have any of their handbags and I don't have any of their small leather goods. I am a huge fan of their footwear uh, and I have heard some people say that uh, they like the quality of Valentino handbags and they have a pretty good price point especially since it's mostly a leather bag. Uh, I love the details that it has with the rock studs on the flap and uh, the chain is actually very comfortable. Uh, some people uh, have even said that they feel it's a little bit more comfortable than a wallet on chain as far as how it feels on your shoulder uh, but when I tried it on I felt that it was a pretty much the same. I feel it's a little bit heavier than the wallet on chain uh, from Chanel. But I love this bag. Again, it's very, very simple. And I also appreciate the fact that it ends up sitting up. And what I mean by that is, if again, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you guys know, when it comes to putting a bag on a flat surface, I don't want it to just kind of flop over. I like the fact that it can sit up um, without a problem, especially if you want to look in inside the bag. So it's something so small. <laughs> it's a detail that I always look for in handbags. I just, again, me and my craziness, but I do prefer that in a bag. Uh, but I really like the design. And uh, again, that beautiful, beautiful red gets me every single time, every single time. So the Valentino Lock Medium Shoulder Bag. Oh yes, in the red, uh, in the red leather. Now, number six, I don't have a picture to share with you guys, but that is the Cartier Love uh, Ring. I uh, talked about this a few times on my channel before. I just really love Cartier. Uh, I love uh, the history behind the brand. And of course, they have exquisite, exquisite quality. Uh, I have thought about getting the bracelet, uh, but let's be honest, that is the price of a handbag. <laughs> and knowing me, I'd end up going for the handbag, even though... Uh, I mean, Cartier is uh, pure gold and it ends up uh, holding its resale value insanely well and it ends up just kind of uh, adding to the value as the years go by. Uh, but the love ring, I, I think it's beautiful. It's very simple. It has just, I don't know, it doesn't have to be gaudy. And even though like right now I'm wearing something super gaudy and I tend to go for just kind of really loud and sometimes maybe obnoxious jewelry, I love the simplicity of it. I love how classic it is. And the best thing about it is the reason as to how it even came about. Uh, so it's been, I put it on my wish list, a, you know, a few, a few months ago, actually more than a few months ago, about a year ago now. Uh, but I think it's, I think it's absolutely beautiful. So hopefully I will be able to add it at some point in time to my collection. <laughs> Number seven, the Goyard St. Louis Tote, especially in that particular combination, it is gorgeous. And a huge thank you to my very good friend, Angie, for allowing me to use her pictures for this video. She captures the beautiful, the gorgeous details of this bag perfectly. Uh, but okay, so this bag, you guys know that I am very fond of totes, as I said before. Uh, well, Minnie, you're saying you're fond of totes. You're fond of, you know, hand carry. You're fond, you're fond of this. All right, I'm a handbag addict. What can I tell you? Uh, but, <laughs> but this bag, especially because I'm so fond of the Louis Vuitton Neverfull, I love the simplicity of it. And uh, I love the fact that you can personalize it a lot more than you would a Mon Mano Neverfull from Louis Vuitton. Uh, but it has a fantastic history and I've done a ton of research on it. And I've, I've been very happy with all of the feedback that I've gotten 
gotten from all the research that I've done. It seems like it would be a really great investment, not investment, but a really great addition to my collection. Uh, and another thing that I have to say about Goyard is that they hold their resale value insanely well. Whenever you look on the pre-loved market, you can find them for close to, if not retail price. Uh, and of course they don't have an online store. Uh, they have select uh, boutiques that you have to, they have to check them out. The only thing, the only reason why I haven't fully jumped into a Goyard bag just yet is because as most of you know, I prefer the structured handbags and this one ends up being a little, it doesn't hold its, its shape as well. So that's kind of, I go back and forth on it. Uh, but everything else I appreciate about it. And again, I like the fact that it's so, it's so simple. And the funny thing is, is that I feel that the, the Goyard print for what I would normally go for is a, it's a little bit more of a busier print, you know, the outside, uh, it's a little bit more of a busier print. And usually I tend to shy away from that just because I prefer just the, the very simple designs or the very, uh, minimalistic type of look. Uh, but I don't know what it is about it. It just intrigues me. And, um, it, there's there's <laughs> seriously something that I love about it. I just couldn't tell you. I couldn't pinpoint exactly why I like that, uh, you know, that, that busy print so much. Uh, but I am still a fan and hopefully I can add it to my collection soon. <laughs> Number eight will definitely not be a surprise. The Louis Vuitton Montaigne MM in the emprunt leather in the color noir. This bag is beautiful. It has been on my wish list for about actually over a year, maybe like a year and a half, a year and a half. And I can't tell you why I haven't I can't tell you, honestly. I can't tell you why I haven't added it to my collection. I go into the boutique. I always ask for it. I'm sitting there looking at it. And uh, there's just so many things that I like about this bag. I love the structure of it. Uh, I love emprunt leather. Um, I love how simple it is. It's not too in your face. I like the fact that it has all those little compartments. Uh, and it's just such a great bag. It's such a beautiful piece. And I also feel that it'll end up holding its shape a lot better because of the structure that it has. Uh, so kind of like what I mentioned before, I don't really go for bags that end up um, just kind of just kind of, bleh, you know, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now I'm doing sound effects that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, but when you set it down, it just kind of loses its shape is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> because of the structure that it has, uh, I don't have to worry about the embossing just kind of flattening out because sometimes with emperor bags, that's what could happen. There, you know, the, the monogram isn't as prominent as it is when you first, when you first get it, it starts to flatten out. But I feel because of the structure that this bag has, I won't end up having that issue. Uh, but I hope to add this back to my collection this year, you know, just kind of either that or, you know, I'm sitting here all talk and no action. I'm not, I'm not adding the bag to my collection. I just keep talking about it. Uh, but I think it is absolutely, absolutely beautiful. And uh, it also holds its resale value very, very well. So that's always a bonus. <laughs> Number nine, the Yves Saint Laurent monogram chevron pebbled leather wallet on chain. Hopefully I said that correct. <laughs> so in the picture, you end up seeing that beautiful red and that beige, but knowing my luck, I'll probably end up going for the black one. <laughs> uh, but I'm a big fan of the Yves Saint Laurent pebbled leather. I think that it is one of the best leathers out there, in my opinion. Uh, not only does it end up holding its shape, I feel that uh, it, ha it can really withstand wear and tear very, very well. Uh, I do have uh, this clutch and it's the same type of material. You can see the little pebbles there. And uh, you don't have to worry about scuff marks. I feel like it doesn't, I feel like it's almost indestructible. I know that's putting it, I mean, that's, that's going to the extreme. Uh, but I haven't had any issues with the two items that I have from Yves Saint Laurent as far as how they have been wearing with the pebbled leather. Uh, so I really like the style of it. It's very simple. Uh, it's very, it reminds me very much so of a wallet on chain from Chanel. Uh, but I like the detail of the chevron pebbled leather that it has on the front. Uh, and I also have to say that I'm a big fan of the, um, of the uh, hardware that Yves Saint Laurent uses. It's a very bright yellow uh, and normally I would end up going for more of like a light gold, like a pale gold, uh, but there's just something about the way that it looks and it ends up glistening oh so beautifully whenever uh, it ends up catching the light. Number 10, the Valentino Rock Stud Slingback 100 millimeter heels uh, in either color, either in the nude or in the black patent leather. These shoes are gorgeous. 
gorgeous. Uh, that one picture that I have uh, where I'm wearing them, I actually posted that on uh, posted that picture on Instagram, and a lot of you guys gave me such awesome feedback. Uh, and I just think that they're gorgeous. The only reason why I've been so apprehensive to add them to my collection is because I tend to be more of a casual dresser. You guys know that. I prefer sneakers, flip flops, espadrilles, uh, flats in general. Uh, and because I have flat feet, I don't have an arch. Whenever I do end up wearing heels, it kills my feet. So I end up going for the other styles of shoes. Um, but these, oh my goodness, these shoes are gorgeous. I, when I tried them on at the department store, every time I've tried them on, because I've tried, <laughs> I've tried them on a few times. <laughs> uh, but whenever I try them on, I cannot believe how comfortable they are. Uh, and usually, even if it's like five, 10 minutes, whenever I try on heels or whenever I end up using heels, they end up just killing my feet within like the hour or two hours because of how uncomfortable I feel them to be. Uh, but with these, these shoes, I was just blown away by how comfortable they are. And a lot of you guys have also said that. Uh, you said, uh, number one, to be careful because it is an obsession. Once you buy one pair, you'll end up wanting to get them in every single color. <laughs> uh, but you guys also said that you can wear them for like eight, nine, ten plus hours without a problem. So that makes me really happy. Uh, but again, because I'm such a casual dresser, my biggest fear is that I'll buy them and they'll end up just sitting in my closet unused. And especially for the price tag, uh, I'm not too, um, you know, that kind of, that worries me. And I have thought about getting the flats because I do like flats, but I feel that, I don't know, I, I like the style. I like the way that the heel looks versus the flat uh, in this particular for this particular um, fashion house, but I think they're they're gorgeous. They are gorgeous, uh, and the little kitten heel, I believe. Um, I don't I don't feel it looks. I don't know. I tried it on. I didn't feel too comfortable with it on, but the hundred millimeter is where it's at. <laughs> All right, you guys, so that does it for my top 10 wish list. Uh, and like I said throughout the video, I hope I'm able to add some of these items to my collection at some point in time, especially this year. It would be fantastic if I could do that. Uh, and what I really like about the top 10 items that I have, minus Louis Vuitton, I like the fact that I'm kind of just broadening up my handbag collection to different brands. Uh, so especially since I'm such a fan of Valentino footwear, as I mentioned, I want to give their handbags a chance or maybe try out a small other good first. Since that, that's what I always recommend, trying out to small leather good first to see how uh, you like the fashion house or how the how the leather ends up wearing. Uh, but again, a huge, huge thank you to my very, very good friend Nettie and my very good friend Angie for allowing me to use your guys' picture. It was, um, I mean, I appreciate it immensely, especially because can you imagine sitting here, like I said in the beginning of the video, sitting here for like 20 minutes just babbling on about bags and what are you going to reference them to? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so uh, I hope that the visuals were able to help. And I will also be putting, uh, I don't know if I mentioned that in the beginning or not, but I will be putting the prices on the description box below. Uh, that way, if you guys are curious, um, you can just, you can check it out there without having to Google them or without having to, to research them any further, um, you know, as far as pricing goes. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I would love to hear thoughts on these items. Uh, obviously, I don't have them in my collection. What do you guys think? Should I go for them? Should I just move them around? Am I crazy to be adding these items to my collection and not going for something else? I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. So let me know in the comments section down below. Again, if you have any of these items, I would love to hear your feedback. If it's a yay or nay or, or you know, like I said before, am I crazy for even putting it on there? Uh, but I will leave you guys with, uh, at the very end of the video, I wanted to share one of the items that is on my wish list. It is far on the wish list, but it is a Chanel boy bag in the beige caviar leather with the pale gold hardware. I think it's for the 2017 pre-collection. -co I don't remember, uh, but it is a beautiful bag. It's not number 11, it's not number 15, it's way down there because it's beige, but still, I wanted to share just a little bit more eye candy. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already and you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can do that by clicking on this icon up here, which is my face. Someone did mention it kind of looks like a Teletubby popping up. I agree. <laughs> or you can check out this video down here uh, if you want to see a little bit more. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.